So I think that, um, oh, Super Solo. I remember you promised to show settings and equalizers today. Hey, perfect timing. I was going to do this, but it's actually over here on the YouTube side. Um, but yeah, I, I'm getting it, getting into it right now, actually. So the beginning, I think the reason why it sounds like this, in my opinion, like a big reason is what's going on in my master chain. Now, if I can just like not have my flat line going and like still have my volume and stuff, I, I would love to do that. Maybe I can. Let's see. Let me turn all of this off. Oops. So there's like not a lot It's not bad. However, these these guys here I feel like really helped out. And so the first thing that I have is of course this. There there's a few um again a lot of the same plugins that I use. So this is my main master bus here, my master out, I guess. So I have this guy here bumping 50 at like 2 dB and then I have a high pass about 34 and then looks like at about 10k 9.5k I have a 2 2 dB bump this guy a little shelf and so let's see if you might be able to hear this It's very minimal. However, this plugin helps me a lot. This is the SSL comp. And this is the preset that I always use. Chris Lord Algae CLA Stereo Finalizer. This helps with my dynamics and keeps everything just there. Now I'm not going crazy with it. You'll be able to tell. Let me turn it off and then I'll turn it back on. If you really listen, you're going to be able to tell that everything kind of just, just smooths out. You know what I mean? Which I love. This was a um, Jordan Valeriat thing, I believe. Turn that off. Next thing. So this one is a big, it's like a big chunk. And if you get my, um, my routing, this one in particular, this has those three plugins. Well, these two plugins already kind of in there. But this is like, you're going to be surprised how much this does. This was like my little secret sauce here that got me there a lot faster. So this literally, this preset is called multiband compression. And it's just in here. If you go to audio effects, multiband dynamics, and it's in here. I know you can't see it, but it's literally just called multiband compression. So Again, this one's kind of crazy. <clears throat> Drastic difference. But multiband compression, you know, I'm compressing the lows, the mids, and the highs. So lows down here, mids, and highs. And the way that I do that is I, this is like my threshold adjuster. You can see that it like changes. But I don't stray too far away from the, that preset, you know. I just move these accordingly. 
But some of it, I think, has to do with the order. For the longest time, I had my stereo comp after this multiband compression, but I, this worked better. And so that's why I did that. I have Goldfoss, but I have it off because of, you know, CPU I'm streaming. Um, but it's not doing too much. For me, it's just like kind of just smoothing over things that maybe I have missed or whatever. Oops. Um, next thing that I have is Saturn. And this is the saturate and color O. I don't know what the O means. But you can see I didn't do anything. I just did it to the overall mix. Could I have done it? And have I have done it, like split it out in tracks before? I have. And this one, I was just like, meh. And for me, I just turned up the drive. Is that multiband comp and Ableton plugin? It is. And believe it or not, dude, it's what has kept me at Ableton for this time like or this whole time like i would go to other places and it's like i can't get it to sound without this multi-band compression you know it's like oof uh, i got two of them saturns i do have two saturns but there's a reason for it um, and i'll get into it here in a second but i literally just messed with the drive and the eq a little bit i believe maybe i didn't touch this one everyone mm. wants to I'm sorry. It's loud. Very loud. So let's see if we can hear the difference on this one. It's very slight, dude. It's very slight. For me, it just warms up everything. You know, it warms up the low end and stuff like that. So this Saturn in particular, you can see that I have a little bit of a mid thing going on here. And what this is, it's actually for this part. You see that? So this is the on off switch inside of Ableton. For those of you who are not inside of Ableton, you'll see if I go to another part of a song, it's off. See, this one's on, off, on, off. But if I go to this part, it turns on. So I'm gonna show you what that sounds like. This is just my filter. Cool thing is like I can... And then it turns off after. So you can see here, device on. So that's just my quick and dirty way. I, I did it one time and I was like... Psh. It was an accident. I was like checking the different sections, you know, like I probably split out this Saturn too. And I was like, dude, what? This sounds sick. And so, you know. The next thing I have is the multi, another multi-band. This one is basic four band punch, which is in the mastering. Punch and balance. I don't remember if it's one or two. I think it's one. And I literally click it and then adjust these. This one I think might be a bit of a drastic difference as well. Let's go to the chorus. So I adjusted them to my liking, you know, I really tried to listen. And for me, it's again, it's just smoothing things out. I like the way this sounds. That's why I always do this. I found myself, it's funny because like, I'll make these streams reels, you know, like Instagram reels and stuff. And then I'll find myself like um, throwing this on inside of Adobe Premiere because I like the way it sounds. And so I was like, I'm just going to put it in there. Uh, next thing that I have is Soothe. This one is carefully filling compassion. Now, I was checking a whole bunch of them, and I just like this one a little bit more. But I did this bump today. I don't know what it sounds like. 
mainly I heard this in my car and I was like, Ooh, that's just too, it's too harsh. And so that's why I put this in here, but soothe is awesome. I'm going to turn on the Delta so you can hear what soothe is doing. So we're at five, four. So it's basically, you know, getting rid of all that stuff. Now this, I may experiment with this, but so far what I heard in my car isn't bad. Not a ton, right? You can't hear it, which is good, but it's just getting rid of the annoying things about it, you know? It's like, oof. Um, next thing I have is Warmy. So I boosted a little bit of 30. So this is some Dan Bronstein stuff that I was kind of experimenting with. So I boosted just a tiny bit of 30. And then I boosted a little bit of 16. He loves 16 for some reason. And I was like, oh, I see why. And so I boosted it as well. And I feel like it made a big difference for sure. I was messing with this cutoff high frequency, but it's just, I left it at default. You know, I didn't really mess with it. But this is a free plugin, by the way. Warmy EP1A by Kive Audio. So just so you know, free. Free, free, free. Go get it right now before you forget. Uh, oh, let me show you what it sounds like before. It gets that sheen. It gets that nice sheen. Uh, what sound system do you have? Do you got in there? Are you talking about my monitors? So my monitors are Yamaha HS8s. But a lot of my heavy lifting is in these. These bad boys right here. They're, they're Bose Quiet Comfort 2s. But the reason why I use them is because I know them really well. I listen to everything. I live in these headphones. Like when I'm not on stream, I'm on my computer listening to other things in these. I'm at the gym listening in these. I actually use these at work because they... Um, cut out any sort of like, cause they're noise canceling, but they have an aware mode. But if there's like a loud sound, then it like cuts it, you know? And I'm really sensitive with my ears. Like I don't want to lose the, the sounds, like the frequencies that I can hear, you know, uh, your car actually, Oh, I don't know. Um, it came with my car. Uh, I actually drive a 2015, uh, Subaru BRZ. It's the series blue. And it has some tweeters and I think it has a 10 inch sub and it just sounds great, man. And I'm like really, um, particular about my EQ curve in there. I try not to mess with it too much, but you know, just comparing other songs and stuff, I try to match it and it sounds good. But I didn't change, it came with the car, you know, or like maybe the previous owner did some stuff, but I didn't touch it and I think it sounds good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, next thing is True Iron. This thing I just got, thirty-seven bucks, and I really feel like it—it's what helped me get that sound. I feel like, uh, like a dirty sound. You know, this is like emulating transformers, um, like analog transformers, right? So I think this one is a lot. I tried to volume match. <coughs> I think we messed with that a little bit yesterday. I think this is doing a lot of different things for me, but this is not going to leave my, my mix bus or my master bus, mix master bus. It's not going to leave. I'm not going to touch it. 
because it just sounds so good, you know? I would recommend people get this for sure, too. Now, I'm experimenting with where I place it in the mix. Right now, it's at the very end. And I like the way it sounds, you know? Oh, look at this. Sick. I like this one better. All right. Is it too loud now? Okay, so that's my master. And again, like I was telling you guys yesterday, which I can probably resave this one. This can be my April master chain. <clears throat> and so now if I want to use this on other projects, rather than like saving a whole template with everything, I just grab this. <laughs> Done. Okay, so the next thing is, um, let's go to drums. You, want, you ready for drums? And everyone is probably here for the drums. I know I'm here for the drums. <clears throat> so on my master or my drum bus, you can see I have multiple like groups within groups inside of here. But my drum bus, <clears throat> I use NLS bus. And it's not doing a ton, but you can see I have the drive all the way up. This is just a nice, again, analog emulation, right? So this is right in the beginning. Then I have Goldfoss, but it's off again because of computer resources and streaming. Then I have Flatline clipping some stuff. Now, how much is clipping? I'm not sure. It changes on me. Yeah. Right now, it's not clipping anything. <clears throat> so I can get away with turning this off. Then I have the SSL bus um, compressor on the punch setting. And then I adjust accordingly. You could see where I'm at in terms of my levels. Again, not a ton. Not a ton. Let me show you, I think before and after what this one is drastic. This one, not so much. A little bit of a volume boost, but still, it, again, it feels like it's just gluing everything together, which I like. <clears throat> For my kick, these are always changing. Not always, but, you know, changing in terms of just trying to experiment with, you know, trying to get a better kick sound. And, you know, I always want a better kick and snare sound, right? I think that's something that everyone should strive for. Try different things to see if you can achieve the snare sound of your dreams, right? Um, this has this EQ curve. <clears throat> Let me turn them all off. This is my utility. This is just for like gain reduction at the end. That's not like chest, <clears throat> you know, like when you feel it, turn down this, this, it's still bothering me. I might bring it down a little bit more. It's just, it hurts my ears. Like when I hear it, like on speakers and stuff, I'm actually going to bring it down a tiny bit. <clears throat> and I'm not the, the 12 dB, not the 30, but the 30, it doesn't look as crazy. But even there, it doesn't look too crazy. Negative six, negative three, nothing too drastic, right? Um, and then I have a transient shaper. This is, again, another experiment. Trying to get rid of that initial sound. It's just like, again, the loud, it's like, I don't know. 
it's honestly between like 2k and like maybe like seven or eight k that it's just like somewhere in there this kick in particular it just has this and so i, I tried to again another experiment <clears throat> this is also free this transient shaper kilohertz transient shaper they have a whole bundle that comes with this so um get it it's awesome oh let me show you before and after that slight difference but you can hear it it like takes that sharp edge and like smooths it out you know so annoying then i have smash and grab on the kick setting auto gain turned on and then my threshold you can see i'll show you how much gain reduction i'm getting here this is a lot of the sound here Smash and grab is so good. It's so good. I remember when they first it came out and they sent it to me. They're like, dude, check it out. Beta test it. And then make us a demo. And I was like, got it. Easy. I love it. You know? And I actually did a keyboard drum demo. And so I mean, it's what the thing I like about it, how easy it is to use. Output, threshold, beef, air saturation mix drum type like they have a pro section too if you want to adjust these things right i don't sometimes i'll go here not much but what's nice is it shows you you know what it's at two to one tape seven khgs 60 hz's right so it shows you what you're adjusting and so that saturation <clears throat> i had it on tape i had to bring it down to soft because it was getting too crazy but i love what it's doing but you could see i also have it turned down a little bit it's not fully mixed in i couldn't even tell you this percentage maybe 80 70 percent but that's a good one um what what does Gul gulfoss do <clears throat> so gulfoss is kind of like I wouldn't, the easiest way to put it is like an auto EQ, but that's not what it is. Um, it like analyzes whatever you put, like whatever you put, um, whatever you put it on. And this is, these are Nolly settings here. Recover, I had it, I lowered it actually. Again, because of transients. Recover at 17, tame at 20. You know what I mean? So it's like, these are the go-to settings that I, I just put it at. But it's really nice. I love this plugin. Um, Oh, yeah. A few more things. So this is Saturn. Dynamic Warm Transformer. So it looks like I tried to do a true iron on my kick without using, maybe before I bought it. But I think I split these out. I think. Maybe not. I don't remember. But again, just a preset. Dynamic warm transformer. Just more of that low end ooh, ooh, in your face, you know? So I love it. <clears throat> How they went about doing all these things, I don't know. Maybe hit the plus sign and then, I don't know. I just used the preset. <laughs> um, okay, so that's my kick with the utility. That's mixed in, right? So a little duller, but duller on purpose. <clears throat> I'm 
constantly messing with this utility. I have to hear it in my car before I like really nail that down. Okay, so <clears throat> the one that you, a lot of you have been waiting for. Um, the snare. Oh, I'm sorry, Super Solo. Uh, yeah, this is P5. Thank you for reminding me. It's going to take a second to load. But this is P5. <clears throat> I can do pretty much anything with P5. That's why I love P5 so much. Like, it's very versatile, you know? Very. All of my sound likes I've used P5, except for one. Maybe. No. No, I've I've used P5 for all of them. So the snare that I'm using is the Halpern Signature Snare Low. I'm usually here for the most part. Um, the kick is the 22 by 18 Pearl Reference. This one is just too snappy. The thing that I'm trying to get rid of, it's way more prevalent in this one. And so I'm like, no, no, no. And then I'm using the Matt Halpern Sticks. Um, but yeah, everything else is just default. I actually am using, um, I think I'm starting with the snapshot. Yeah, wildfire full turbo. And I don't think that I mess with, you know what I did. <clears throat> so I mess with some of the levels in here. I think it was the toms. I think I brought down a little bit in the overheads. The symbols I brought a little bit further down in the rooms. So I can get more of the snare sound. Um, the snare I brought down a little bit in the overheads. And then the kick I think I brought down a little bit in the overheads. Just to kind of shape, you know, to do the things that I want. But you can see I'm full turbo. I have some reverb stuff going. And I have a drum reverb channel here. That I The, reason, the way that I got that was I changed my output inside of here. Output 13. So you can say I have everything labeled except for this out 13, which I just made the out 13 this. And so that's where my reverb is going and stuff. And so if you have stuff going in your kick, like if you have reverb, reverb in your kick, chances are your output is probably on the same channel your kick is on. So just so you know. Um, <clears throat> snare, right. So this one I'm always, always messing with, man. I've, I'm always trying to experiment to get the sound that I want, but it changes, right? It changes depending on the type of music and this and that, you know, but uh, there's not a ton going on, as you can see. So here is my EQ curve. <laughs> uh, not a lot. <clears throat> Let me show you what it sounds like before. This is like what I call the snare knock that, oh my gosh, makes me want to punch a wall, dude. <laughs> it's just so frustrating because it's that snap that we all have, that we all hate, that you're just like, oh, get out of my face. Just blend in. It's, I realize it's like around 2.5K ish. And so, you know, keep that in mind. I'm, I also am like Dan Bronstein it up right now i'm at plus one he's at plus four but you know still then the, again this is me getting trying to get rid of that snare knock by clipping it so i'm using flatline two clip I'm just straight chopping that transient, dude. That, do you see that? Get out of here. I'm doing 
negative 11. <clears throat> Again, this is something that I'm experimenting with as well. So, you know, this won't, this might not always be that number, but experiment with that, you know. Then I have Gullfoss turned on. I didn't realize that I had Gullfoss on here, but 20 and 20 on Recover and Tam. Again, Nolly Special. Not a crazy huge difference, but I do hear some difference in the high end, which may, this might actually be hurting me. I don't know. We'll see. Then I have Smooth on it, or Soothe on it. You can see I got, look, it's like this. I realize maybe it's this area, but it could be this area. But I have Soothe. This is Snare Detalk. Oof. There's that sound. I don't want it. Again, it's just it just like overblows my my mix. This is the way that I've discovered to fix it for now. Will I find another way probably later? Probably, I don't know, but this is the way that I've I've kind of resolved that issue that I'm having. Chances are I'll find a different way. Then I have smash and grab, snare setting, output, auto gain, threshold. Well, um, I think I already said grab setting. Uh, beef, and then some air, I turned it down a little bit. And then I have saturation, soft, and full mix. So it's about negative five, but you hear all that noise. I don't really care. I don't really care about it. <clears throat> I'm not too worried about it. And then some more transient shaper to like mess around with that, that attra attack transient. But this is actually a little George Lever trick here. He turns up the pump a little bit. And then I don't think he messes with these. And I just mess with the attack a tiny bit. And I turn clipping on. If it ever decides to clip, right? It'll like shave it even more. Just gives that pushed sound, right? That pump sound. I think it's more of a pushed sound. So. Not that much of a difference, so that may come up to overheads and rooms and stuff. But I think there was one thing that I've been experimenting with too is where this is living, right? Like I'll go up one, down one, and I'm just using my up and arrow, uh, up and down arrow to go up and down one dB. That's what's nice about doing it this way. If you want to make a quick change, you just. So a lot of it is, is, you know, leveling and the relationship between your snare, your overheads and your rooms and your drum verb, you know, because those are all stacking that snare sound and that your snare sound is a combination of all of those things. And so you have to think about it in that way. You know, if you have a lot of, let's say 2K, 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 you know what I mean? So it's just like, so you have to find which 2K is giving you the most trouble move that one first and then see, you know, I try my best to always mix in context of the whole mix. That's such an important thing. You're going to make the drums sound good by themselves. And you're going to be like, dude, this sucks. Once you get everything in, because you're, you're, you're catering the drums to itself, not catering the drums to the mix. So keep that in mind too. <clears throat> That's why I do top down mixing. Um, Okay, so that's a snare. Not too exciting. I'm sorry. It wasn't as crazy as you thought. I didn't do anything crazy. 
But I really, again, I think that saturating and clipping are your friends. Saturating and clipping. I'm clipping cr quite a bit, you know? And so, again, keep that in mind. Um, toms, I'm kind of happy with the toms, kind of. I always am, like, messing with them. But I'll show you what I did e either way. <clears throat> toms, less sustain. I realize these toms have a lot of sustain. They just go on forever. I was gating them, but I feel like the transient shaper with like just lowering the sustain gives it a little bit more of a natural sound and not like a gated sound. Um, I think there's, it's this part here that has, yeah. You hear how long it goes? Then I turn this on. It's a little less. It just kind of goes away. Like it, the volume goes down a lot faster. So <clears throat> here's my EQ curve. Fairly typical EQ curve for toms. Uh, this maybe not so much, but this again, me experimenting. Oof. <clears throat> so again, fairly typical I'll even give you the numbers if this helps you in terms of P5. High passing up to 50. Again, experimenting. Experiment with that as well, depending on how much low end you want in your toms. Negative 4 at 103 hertz. 545 hertz. Probably just use my ear. Brought it down about 5.4 dBs, maybe 6 dBs. Give me a sec. Sorry about that. 3.2K, almost 3.3K, plus 3 dB, just for that, you know, high sound. But very broad strokes, for the most part. Didn't get too crazy with them. Um, will this be saved as a video? Yeah, dude, this is going to be on YouTube. It's actually, um, you're probably watching it in 4K. It'll be in 4K. And uh, I may edit this down, depending on... Um, I probably should because we looked at the homies photos and stuff before. And so I may try to edit this down and it'll, you'll see it eventually in the main page of my YouTube channel. Um, next thing I have is smash and grab, of course, Tom setting. So I'm mainly using this as like a compressor, you know, you can see my moves aren't too drastic and my gain reduction is about three to five. I think it was at three. Oh, three to five. So just catching those overtones and stuff. And then some saturation, you can see. I love saturation and I realize how important it is. Over time, you know, as I, in my mixing journey, you know, I've been doing this since like, I've been mixing music since... Man, I would say like legitimately, well, legitimately, right? Since like 2015, 2014. But like, you know, I've been writing and trying to mix myself since like 2005. And so... <laughs> So I'm at like 32%, you know? <clears throat> Yo, Joss, of course, man. Thanks for stopping by, dude. And um, yeah, the video will be up for you. For show, for show. Makes sense now. Yes, please. 
So the last, the last thing that I do that is kind of, I typically do this for like vocals and stuff, but I wanted to experiment to see if I could do this with um, toms. And I started doing it a little bit ago and I watched Dan Lever or George Lever and Dan Bronstein, and they both do something similar to this. They will put a limiter on their toms just to capture, like to, um, to catch those, like those overtones, you know, like, just so they don't get out of hand. That's what it is. You're literally just like putting him in the cage and you're like, you can't go past this cage. Do whatever you want, but you're not going past this, you know? Now, for me, it was like experimenting with how much I want, wanted this to affect it. For me, it's like, I want to affect it right before you could start to hear that it's affecting it, right? So, <clears throat> yes, I agree. I just watched those, man. So when I had to work, rather than just like not doing anything, like playing video games or like just watching TV, I got the nail, the mix, George Lever and Dan Bronstein, and I just watched them because I wanted to, you know, learn some stuff for myself and for the homies, you know, to kind of like get some stuff going. Um, and it's just be able to explain it, right? And I'll use this a lot of your mixing techniques. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny is, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a product of my environment, right? I love Nolly stuff as well. Um, I look up to all those guys. And so another guy that I look up to that I feel like He's, he gets some credit, but I don't think he gets enough credit, is Adam Bentley. Adam Bentley is such an amazing dude, just all around. Uh, he is kind of the one that inspired me and really helped me to elevate my mixes. <clears throat> he was the one that was, he showed me this um, L1 trick on my overheads, which I'll get to. Um, but yeah, it's my snare, that's my toms, not too crazy. My hats, I just have some EQ going. Not too crazy. Um, I think here. Get out of here, dude. For me, I'm trying to find things that hurt my ears and get rid of it. It's like, oh, that hurts my ears, dude. And it's usually around here that where it starts to hurt my ears. Overheads. <clears throat> I think this is an important. A lot of a lot happens in your overheads that, you know, you should try your best to keep. I've experimented with this over time because Jordan Valera he uses it mainly for symbols. Dan Bronstein is like, I don't high pass nothing. Just let it fly. And I was like, okay. George Lever, I think he's the same. <clears throat> I started doing that a little bit before I, st I watched those. Just again, to experiment. And I like the way, I like what it did to my mix. It filled it in, you know, which was nice. Um, For me, it's taming those symbols, bro. Very dark. And I think I'm trying to cater to this overall mixed style. <clears throat> but you're, you're going to be able to see what I did. So my limiter here. This is a cool trick. Again, this is something that uh, I, I got from Adam Bentley, which he may have gotten from Nolly. I don't know. Again, all the homies are just teaching all the homies. But this is nice because it really, um, it tames the, your snare peaking and hitting compressors because the cool thing about this trick is it's not really affecting your snare too much but it is getting rid of those like transients in the attack that's hitting your compressors too hard so this is a nice one default setting literally i didn't mess with this this is default and then i brought these down you'll be able to see let me uh let me turn the, all of these off just so you can hear it. Mm -hmm. 
So it's doing a lot, and you can hear it, but I'm not too worried about it. I've I've always done this, like since I found out in like 2015, I think it was. And then this is me taming symbols. We realize, and if you haven't, you will now that I'm about to say it, because you won't be able to unhear it. Symbols aren't as loud as you think they are. Like, it's crazy. Go listen to a Zach Zervini mix, you know? It's crazy. But, <clears throat> so I, I'm using this, I'm using this as like, it's very slow. My release is very slow. You can see when it gets and like when it kicks in, it takes a while to get back. For those of you who don't know, the attack is how soon your compressor kicks in. The release is how slow it comes back after it got kicked in, right? So if you have a fast release, let's say you have a fast, fast attack, fast release. It's going to be really fast. Fast attack, slow release. Right? So you got to think about it that way. <clears throat> a little quick, quick tut. But I have a fast attack, slow release. So you'll see it's kind of just juggling there. <clears throat> just so you know, just so you know. Mazak, dude. Thank you, man. I'm going to say that out loud. Chris, this is a good short. Thanks to Mazak for letting me know. You're helping your boy with the edits, dude. <laughs> Thank you, man. <clears throat> Yeah, if any of you, if any of uh, any of you guys hear something that may be a good like little piece of content, just shout it out. I use like a text-based editing inside of Premiere, and so I can just like control find what I said. Like this is a good short, Chris, and so that that actually helps out. So appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, Ms. Hawk. Is there a cheap alternative? Um, there is. I just forget what it's called, man. But one thing that I do try to do and I've experimented with is using a multiband compression and just messing with the high setting here and then messing with my attack and release here. So this is like above negative uh, 36 dB, you know, and so it's like just messing with these settings and then bringing this down to kind of like do that same sort of thing. And you can solo it so you can hear, you know, what it sounds like. Sorry if that hurts your ears. But yeah, <clears throat> I would experiment with that. And then like any sort of multi-brand compressor that's inside of your DAW, whatever DAW you use, try to do that. What I aim for is <clears throat> pretty long look ahead or like, you know, I'm at six milliseconds. And then um, slow attack or I mean, fast attack, slow release. And then, you know, adjusting your threshold. This will change depending on the mix. These ones, apparently, I wanted them a little louder, so. But I do other things. So I have, here's my EQ for this. Look at this. Apparently I was pissed at the symbols. <clears throat> For me, it's it's a context thing. They may sound really weird in context. I mean, with just by themselves, but in context, it works. But again, this is more experimenting. Seeing how much I can get away with removing before it just starts to sound weird. But I'm I feel like I'm making up with um, making up for it with this 16k bump in the free warmy. EP1A, this 16K boost. Like all the things that I'm getting rid of, I'm boosting the things that I actually like. And so that's why that's there. Looks like I did another one. Getting rid of more resonances and stuff like that. 
I'm not afraid to use multiple EQs just because you get a fresh slate and you get to see uh, the analyzer, right? I'm an analyzer guy. I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, but the cool thing about Pro Q3 is this here. That's what's nice. Stuff like that. If you hover over that spectrum, it'll show you the things that are like peeking out the most. Then you can check and see what it is. And if you don't like it, you could bring it down a little bit. Look at that. 3K is still peaking. What is this 800 here? One thing that I should mention, it's easy to get carried away with this. So be careful. Do it, but be very careful. Your mix will start sounding weird. And you're going to be like, why? This is probably why. You got too weird. <laughs> What's your favorite part? Composing or mixing? Dude, I don't know. I, th I feel like I love them both equally. I used to hate composing because it was so hard. But now that I'm forced to come up with things and like this new way that I've been writing and just really having fun with it and just getting creative with the notes rather than having to play it right away, I'm able to just create all the time, which it brought my love for making music again back, you know, which is nice. Um, Sooth. Actually, I'm using the Nolly preset, Symbol Smooth, but I'm, I... I changed my curve. You can see I'm really trying to tame those symbols, man. Oh, let me turn it off. For me, I feel like it's just cutting off the transients a little bit, but it's doing it in a smart way, right? Like in this general area, just get rid of the sharpness and selectivity, high selectivity. So you're just like, you know, I think it's a lot tighter in terms of what it's selecting rather than if you have your selectivity down, I believe it's more broader strokes. Again, this is just a, a Nolly preset under drums. Simul smooth. Now, I know this plugin is expensive. However, if you want something that is going to drastically change and really help out your mix, Soothe. It's insane. Such a, a, a great purchase, man. Everyone that I know and watch uses it because it's just... It's revolutionary for sure. Everyone uses it now. Everyone. When, even when I was using watching Control Hub demos, this was after Control Hub. So, you know, keep that in mind. This is something that I think everyone should have. And again, I know it's expensive, but so good. So good. And then Phantom Center. This was experimenting again. Trying to get some center out so I can leave room for my actual snare. Yeah, it's not doing much. Experimenting with this center. So this, again, for those of you who don't know, Phantom Center literally takes your information because you have left, right, and center. Even if you have things panned, like your guitars, you still have center information. This, you're able to turn it down. So leave room for your snare. This is huge. This is a game changer and it's free. Burdum Audio Phantom Center. It's free. Another one. Go get it. Type it into Google right now. I'll wait. No, I'm just kidding. But go get it for real. It's, it's, you would be dumb not to. But be careful with this, you know, use it sparingly, very lightly. Because a combination of all the things that you don't want in the center, or, you're going to do all those things and you're just like, oh, dude, there's my snare. There's the body of my snare. There's my vocal, you know? Very good. <clears throat> Mono, 
didn't use it. No, maybe I used it, but I didn't do anything to it. I should probably do something with it. I always forget to turn this off. Maybe I'll turn it down. I don't know, but maybe it's helping my sound. I'll leave it at zero. I won't mess with it. I can like smash it, but I feel like I'm already getting a good result. So I'm not going to mess with it too much. Okay, rooms. So I process rooms together. However, my volumes are different because room two on P5 is a lot more uh, on the high end side, like more transients and stuff. See how this one's a lot like duller? So keep that in mind. I always keep this one a little bit lower if I'm trying to get that dull sound, you know. So with my rooms, again, more experimenting. L1, kind of like that overhead trick. Which you could tell that it's not doing it anything anymore. Which I wonder if I put these on here instead. Let's see. Yeah. Which, I'm not too worried. It actually sounds, it sounds okay. Not too worried about it. <clears throat> then I have my EQ8. I use an EQ8 for my rooms. Not sure why. But you could see my number three here, which is here, number three. You can see it's kind of grayed. 2.1K down negative three dB with kind of a wide Q here. The snare knock, the snare knock. That's what I'm I'm getting rid of. And then just high passing up to 35. Again, I don't need a ton of low end. <clears throat> Nothing here, as you can see. Nothing. Drum verb, just a little bit of EQ. <clears throat> which is, you know, just trying to shape that reverb sound. It's very nice. <clears throat> okay, so I know that we're going, we're pretty high on time right now, an hour and 26 I don't know if uh, I'm, I may fly through this, but this is not much different than what I've been doing in terms of um, bass and guitar. So for my bass, I'm using Nolly Bass on the DI setting. And it looks like I'm using ascending fret logic. I'm not sure why. I didn't do that intentionally. Muting noise, muting noise I have up. Humanize, I think I have up. This is usually down. Um, sub, I have a little bit of it up. Then I have a defix, which is like a virtual preamp, which I always forget to turn that on. Again, this is the presets that I bring in that I forgot to change. But it's like a virtual preamp, like plugging your bass into a preamp before you go into your interface. Parallax on the mic'd up setting. I don't think I mess with this too much. I might have. But to keep note of, you know, where this stuff is. Uh, sorry. You can hear it's very consistent. That's the goal. Here's my EQ settings, kind of crazy looking. <clears throat> but those of you there have, have been here, it hasn't changed because I don't think I've had to go in here and change it. But I feel like it's like a little handle, like you can grab the handle. <laughs> Looks like it's like a finger or something. So 
sometimes this will stay up higher, but depending on the style of music and stuff. And then this. More experimenting, right? Then I have gold fonts, but it's off, but it's the 2020 thing. You can see 19 and 20. Again, this is just kind of smoothing out things I might have missed or something. Our base. This thing. Very good. This is the legacy version of our base. Look at that. Let's go. So our base is sick because it adds harmonics a little bit where you want them. Like I have it at 65 for some reason. This is Jordan Valeria trick. I have it really low, negative 22. You probably won't even hear the change. But well, the thing I like about this is in your small Bluetooth speakers, that's where this helps. So that's why I have this on there. I mean, I could try to show you what it sounds like before and after. Kind of a difference, a little bit. Then I have tried and true double tap. Amazing. I didn't mess with these yet. You could see. I should probably adjust these. But I'm liking the sound that I'm getting a little bit. Let's see. Maybe we can adjust it right now. Oh, no, we're good. Yeah. <clears throat> cool thing about double tap is if you hover over the knob, ideal amount, one to two orange lights. And then it tells you what it does. And then all comp, hover over this. Ideal amount, two green, occasionally jumping into the orange. It tells you exactly where you should try to get it. You know what I mean? Fairly close. I have it on the grunt setting. Grunt is nice. Grunt, our favorite bass saturation algorithm. Tweaked and refined to perfection. Adds aggressive parallel saturation to give the bass more presence in the mix. And I agree, it helps a ton. Talk about bass consistency. And if you're on my Instagram, you've seen my little story about this. I'm I'm not just saying that. They're not paying me to say that, or they didn't give me this or anything. I bought this, and I love it. Uh, Pro Q3, again, just getting rid of some resonances, looks like. And then experimenting, adding a little bit of 42 in my sub low range just to see what happens because if i bring this up and if you have some uh, good enough earbuds or speakers so i wanted to experiment to see if that'll help if i like when i go in my car with my 10 inch sub what that'll do to it right you should constantly be doing these little experiments with your mixes just to see what it does. Don't be afraid to. You know what I mean? What's the worst? You're going to have to delete this. You know what I mean? Like it's gone. So try things. Rhythm guitar. <clears throat> I am using Odin 2. Pan rhythms expanded. Swift mode turned off. DI fix again. My little um, preamp. This helps a ton. Gojira X. I'm using the JD Rhythm 2 preset, but I'm also, um, I have a little bit of EQ stuff going on, and I'm using a custom IR, custom, I'll, I'll get into that, Studio Capzilla, uh, and then I have Octave turned on. I think the this might be, I might have changed some of this stuff, but don't quote me on that. Nothing on here, very basic. Uh, patch. Uh, Studio Cab. If you have Studio Cabzilla, copy these settings if you have this. And you're going to get like 80% there. This is awesome. My homie Joe uh, from Empyrean Audio. Who also hangs out in the chat and uh, is on Twitch. And you should go and follow him. He gave me these settings here. 
And it's nice because it works for, you know, your left and right inside of Odin. This was a big game changer for me, man. Really helped out my tone. Such an important part of your tone here. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so hopefully you got it. Master EQ's on. Here we go. Here's this. I have it on 30, so let's see what it looks like. Not too bad. I have it on negative six. Let's go to 12 because that's usually where default is. Just getting rid of some overtones and stuff like that. That's 3K. This is 4K. This is 2.2K. 1.4. Again, just annoying, annoying sounds. Uh, can confirm my sh my sound change rapidly. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, taming the low end things, right? I'm sure you've seen this. Things that can affect my consistency of my bass and stuff. And then my 76 Pro C. It's an opto, right? It's an opto setting, but I literally just use the bite and sustain. And then adjust it accordingly. <laughs> it's not doing a lot. But if anything gets crazy, you know, it's there to catch it. <clears throat> Goldfoss 2020, 17 and 10. So, again, keep that in mind. Soothe. This actually helped a lot too. And I mess around with this setting. This is this one's Guitar D Spike. Sometimes I will use Digitize Software Amp or Digitize Software Amp. That actually helps a ton too. I may mess with this but I'll show you what it's doing. Just helps it blend into the mix, man. And then I have Warmy, which I don't know if I have a ton going on here. I boosted 100 for some reason. And then I boosted 16, which... I already am boosting here, so I don't know if that's hurting me or helping me, but I haven't noticed it, so I'm going to leave it. And then I have wider at 3%. I actually should put a, a center on here. I didn't put a center. I'm going to do that. Um, this is free as well. I only have it at 3%, but this is nice because it does exactly what the plugin says. It's great. It's really great. <clears throat> Um, you won't be able to really hear a difference with that, but let me put a center on here really fast. All phantom center. I put it after. Probably bring it down. So that, that's going to help with my snare even more. Again, you're not going to really be able to hear this too much. <laughs> I don't fully get rid of it, but it leaves so much room. Did you hear all that center information that you think you're panning left and right? You still got center information there. So bring it down. Just a little bit. Not don't get crazy. Um clean guitar. This is my clean guitar here. Super compressed. <clears throat> yeah, I have two compressors going. Which, it sounds kind of crazy by itself, but in the mix, it sounds pretty good. So this is Hydra. 
Shredded's three Hydra. But this is the homie uh, Akita, who is in the chat sometimes. This is his preset that he made. He went through this thing like with a fine tuned comb and like made this preset. And if you want this preset, it's actually in the Discord. And uh, for the homies on YouTube, Discord is in the description. For the homies on Twitch, I believe it's. That might work. Hopefully. I'm hoping. <clears throat> Let me know if it doesn't. But this is nice because it's the left and right. I love the cleans from Shredditch 3. <clears throat> I feel like Odin 2 just doesn't have the cleans like Shredditch does. But with Akita's preset, the strumming and stuff that it does, oh, so good. So good. <laughs> DI fix, of course. Again, to just kind of help get rid of that sound of, of fake guitar. Storyteller. I'm using the Storyteller preset and then i think i tweaked it a little bit a little bit of chorus nothing here here's my settings here right is turned on using the same cab just default cab and then here's my settings here and then delay and some shimmer reverb which is really helping the ambience here I think my compressor or my compression is helping that too. I have glue compressor going. And then I have the UAD compressor going as well, which I got this for free when I bought like a plugin or something on uh, Plugin Alliance or something. But dude, this is so good for vocals. Because it just keeps everything planted. That's why I wanted to experiment with this on this clean guitar. Just leave it right there. You can see it's kind of overdoing it, in my opinion. But it sounds good in the mix. That's my clean guitar. Here's my lead. I think a lot of people want this one. <clears throat> Odin 2. Pan leads essential. Defix. Again. Love it. This, this plugin isn't too expensive. So I have reverb going before my Gojira. This is Connor Orchestral, but I tweak the settings. Um, OD. A little bit of OD. Here's my settings. Looks like I have gain going. Maybe that might have been a part of this, this preset, possibly. No, it was actually lower. I was the one that did this, I think. Here's my settings. I think I did these. And then post effects. I actually brought the decay and mix down a little bit. And then my feedback is still high, which is fine. But what is really helping that sound is this reverb before 2.41 second decay. Just really blurry. That's what I want, you know? I don't want it to stick out. And then some Phantom Center. Reverb is a default Ableton. Yes, this is a default reverb here. Love this. I love this reverb. It's so like, you get what you get, you know? Turn up the DK, make it stereo if you want, add a chorus, you know? I did all the things on this because I wanted it to just be kind of, you know? Again, this is experimenting, trying to get more center information out of the center that I don't want 
a lot of in the center, right? Um, I mean, that's really it. Omnisphere, I have a little bit of EQ going on and compression with some wider and final center. This one I have kind of high. Ooh, that's a big change. Phantom Center. You can hear it. It was right there, and I just brought it down. Spire. This is this sound. LD Dolphin AZ with some tweaks, I believe. Phantom Center to get it out of the center. And that's it. I did this whole thing on stream and so you can watch exactly how i went about doing it and i think i made i have an instagram reel coming out maybe i put it out already if not it's coming out of this whole process if you want to see like the quick version it'll be on my instagram uh very soon rc20 on the retro game or yeah retro game stereo messed around with this i mean you can see this was just a lot of tweaking. And again, I did this on stream so you can see all the things that I messed with. Some EQ, just to get that sound, right? Some compression. Just to tame some things, it's not doing a ton, you can see. But dudes, that's, I mean, that's everything. I think some key things is your volume levels, man. I know mine look kind of crazy, but I think it's because my master was a preset. But all this being said, like, don't even look at these. You don't have to look at these. Just use your ears and really try to pay attention. Like, go and listen to reference mixes. I'm going to do this. Go and listen to reference mixes. And really just listen, like, where's their kick at in relation to everything else? Where's their, their snare at in relation to everything else? Like, try to take a mental mental note. What I'll do is I'll have Spotify right next to Ableton, and I'll just A-B like a madman. Oh, okay, their compression is, like, doing this to the kick, which is causing it to kind of do this. And then, oh, the snare is really dull. It's duller than I thought. Like, oh, the cymbals are, like, you know, not as, as loud as I thought, too, you know? And so... A lot of these things are just like critical listening. I think that's what makes a good mixer, you know. You're able to critically listen to these other things and really start to hear what things are there, what things aren't there, you know. And it's like, oh, this sounds this way, but it sounds this way on my mix. Why? Oh, okay, maybe he's like shaving off transients or whatever, you know. So I think that's the biggest thing. Like you can probably do the same exact things that I'm doing. And if your levels aren't right, it might not sound the same. And so that's just kind of goes to show you the levels, uh, how important the levels are, you know, like levels are, are really, they're so important. That's why they say, you know, gain stage before you get started. And so keep that in mind. Where's the kick in this mix? How loud is it? How loud is the snare of this mix? I love the snare. When I have a good snare, I want it to be loud. But is it really that loud in this this mix that I'm trying to make mine sound like, right? Symbols. 
How loud or quiet are the symbols? You know, all these things just to keep in mind, um, because I feel like it goes over. Look, some people in the community jams, I'm like, oh, yeah, your drums are kind of low or your drums are kind of quiet. But they're a guitarist, you know, so they want to hear their guitar. And so they bring up their guitars really loud. And you're like, oh, why does my mix sound small? Your guitars might be a little too loud. Try to bring them down and you're going to start to hear everything else. Try to breathe. Because by turning all these guitars up, you're you're suffocating these other elements, right? And so it's all about balance. But um, yeah, dudes, we're running seriously over time. Uh, we're going to be doing community jams over um, the community over on Twitch. So if you're over on YouTube, come and hang out with us for um, a little bit longer. And we're going to check out what the homies do have done. And then, um, yeah. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe and all those cool things. Um, it really helps me out, believe it or not. Um, if you want to check out my Patreon, I'll just show you that really fast. I kind of showed you a little bit earlier, but it has some cool things in here. Uh, some fills that I use, actually used in this song. Groove packs, this is not going to be the only one that I ever make. And so, you know, there's other cool things in here. I do sounds like every once in a while. And so there's some multi-tracks and stuff like that. There's going to be more. I just haven't had time to really dive in and get these other sounds like in there. And so, you know, that'll be coming very soon. But I'm constantly, constantly adding things, you know, because I want to add value to you guys because you guys are supporting me. and It means a ton. So, you know, serum patches. But yeah, dudes, I'll be over on Twitch. Um, and so we'll see you guys over there. Appreciate you so much.